Well, spring is looking beautiful in this part of the world. I think we're we're still all aglow from both Easter and the beautiful spring weather. Where you're sitting, the prospects may not be bright. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe you've had a traumatic health diagnosis. Uh, maybe you're just in a very difficult place of uncertainty today. I think William Ashley is right on time. He's here from Toronto and uh, he has a, a wonderful journey to share. It's not all wonderful to hear about, uh, William. Uh, your career began in graphic design. Yes, it has. You were in Toronto and you were at the top of your game. I was. And, and you know, I, I was in a position where I was very much uh, influential within the uh, interest I was working. I was working as a graphic designer and it was mostly t-shirts. So I was doing graphic designs, basic, and also uh, fine art uh, because I was doing uh, wildlife illustration which was my specialty most of the time and uh, were you trained as an artist I was not uh, it was just this uh, <laughs> talent I discovered that oh wow God gave me a special gift and uh, I enjoyed doing it and so I, I always explored ways of being better at it and so eventually you know it really uh, became that which I felt very comfortable at doing as a job as a location. Uh, where w were you spiritually? Did you have a God thought in, in well, these you know, days in your life? I, I tell you what, uh, I grew up in a family which went to church. We had to, whether or not we wanted to. Oh. Okay. So I believed there was a God. Absolutely. Uh, so that much I would say yes. And not only believe, but there was not, never did I have an indication that there could not have been any God knowing that I was created? I believed that also. So I knew there was a God, but never met him. Mm. Never. Now, were you married at this time? I was not. Not yet. When, when I was in Jamaica, I was not married. I, I just got married when I came to Canada. So, uh... But, uh things were just trucking along oh, yeah. beautifully. Was, you, know. you, you had a dream of a... a a, a dream home in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you had some goals. All that. When did things start to get shaken? Well, I'll tell you what, um, I was very privileged. Uh, uh, I was very well known in the field I work. And so it was not hard to work. And so came to that place where I had to decide to go freelance because there were offers around. So I went freelance, I could work with different companies at times. I was working with at least uh, six or five companies, you know, and uh, that yeah, was the world like a by dream. The tail. Yeah. yeah, it was, you know. So, no other thoughts. No, I never thought I'd want to do or go anywhere else. But you know, I, I, I thought about it, and I, I, I believe that God had plans for me. I remember clearly at one point I said to my wife, I said, "You know what? That was when I landed a pretty good job." I said. I think I only need to work another year and then I'll be where I want to be. You mean I retire? I, oh, just be free to do other things, you oh. know. I, I thought that, uh, that I would be able then to start my own business. You know, you need money to start your own business, that sure. sort of thing. And I thought that job would have done that for me. So I felt comfortable and I was just enjoying it. I was out, out for a ride, you know, and uh, it went very well until Eventually, I, I was called by the president of the company, and uh, he told me that, uh, like, I saw people leaving the company around me, but even then, You didn't I had, think it would touch oh, you? Oh, no. You know, I was the lead designer in the company, oh. so I never thought that would have touched me, you know. I remember someone I brought into the company was a very good designer, and I remember the day he left, and even then, I never thought of me going. I thought, well, I will be the last person standing here. How oh, arrogant I thought it was. And uh, he called me in on a Friday, and he said, you know what? Um, he was very sad. And uh, he said, well, you know, I'm so afraid we won't be able to keep you any longer. And I said to him, listen, if it is about the money, forget about that. We can discuss that you pay me less, you know. There was not any need for you to be paying me that much to stay here. I came here to do a job and I want to finish it. And he said to me, no, you deserve what you're being paid and there's no way we're going to keep you here for less. I said, well, we could 
think about it later on once you're back on foot, you know? And he said, no, I'm afraid we just have to let you go. And uh, that really shocked me. You, know? you were totally unprepared for this of possibility. Course. Of course, I never thought of it. So I, I never thought of having any plans in place for this. You know, I was firm, I was solid, and I was riding with the wind, that sort of a thing. William, is this where the cluster migraines started? You know what? I was having those migraines before, uh -huh. but that surely didn't help. Mm. You know, they revisited me, and um, I suffered these because these usually come on around September, mm. and they would last, you know, until maybe February. So those took quite a chunk out of a year for me, that sort of a thing. I managed to land another job doing photo um, restoration. There I was again in charge, but this time a bit more cautious because I learned my lesson and uh, I was making plans. I thought, you know, let's see where I go with this. And I was still looking around to go back where I was before, you know. And even that job didn't last. Mm. I lost it, and this time now it was for real, where it was for a long spell, I was out of work. Well, one, one wonderful thing came yes. out of your sleeplessness. Yes. You watched our nightlight program. Yes, absolutely. And there Paul will be hosting. Yep, Paul will be. 2 to 4.30 you know in the morning. Yes, and I discovered that program before this happened. Mm. Okay, saw so glimpses of it, never stopped on the channel. But this time, I stopped there, and uh, I watched it that night. And, uh, the first night I saw it, I watched it, and I thought, wow, they're speaking to people like myself, you know. And uh, uh, every night I look forward to watching this, because I wouldn't sleep anyways. And, you know, there were some encouraging things be going on there, and some familiar, because when I went to church before, I used to hear some of these things, and uh, they sound deep, they did. Mm. And I remember uh, after maybe a week or so watching this, I used to walk around and uh, I used to say, I need to see God, I need to, I need to find God. I said that to my wife, I said it to everyone that knocked my door, even if they were selling something. I would really? ask them, do you pray? Pray for me. I think I need to find God because of where I'm at right now. I'm not sure what's mm -hmm. going to happen. I'm very low right now. Those and, cords uh, of loving kindness were reeling yes, you in. Right in, right in. Matter of fact, one of the pieces that I brought today, I did that a year before. Oh. I really surrendered to God. And, you know, I felt it so strongly. I saw it. I spoke about it for months before I, wonder, I did it. I wonder, can we break a camera to... To, uh, absolutely, the it's, Bible. Yes, you the did Bible. this a year before you before gave I, your life to Christ. Absolutely, I did. You, you were almost—it sounds as if you were obsessed. I was with getting to God. I think so, and I didn't even know it myself. And what intrigues me about this is not just the the drama and the the beauty and the fact that you have put all this time into painting a Bible, but you've actually labeled it "Sword of the That's Spirit." The spirit. Absolutely. Not just best-selling book, but. And if God's you notice, word. the hand, that's my hand. Oh, I looked at my hand to paint that piece. I did. Wow, a full and year. Of course, I made it look like a hand that has been through a lot, that has been around for a long time. Uh, so that's the only difference there. In the midst of this, you're feeling useless and empty. Absolutely. And I'm sure desperate, William. Oh, desperately. I'm, I mean, I was just hoping there was an offer someplace. There's something I could do. You know, and I felt very s satisfied when I did that piece. I didn't know it was taking me. And I remember uh, I started thinking, okay, why don't I start doing some, I call them Christian greeting cards, I was thinking. And, uh, remember there was you, you haven't even given your life to Christ yet. Not yet. But you're going to do some but Christian greeting cards. But there was being drawn onto this <laughs> path, uh -huh. you know. And I tell you, it was something very wonderful happening to me. And uh, God knows how to change our lives. You know, I'm sure he knew why he took me along that path the way he did. He introduced it to me. And uh, without me even having a knowledge as to the extent of this. And when I eventually realized what was going on, I remember I used to do this stuff that would excite people. 